two Southland toddlers disappear with their babysitter. More at 11. Tonight on Rescue 911, these true stories of critical moments and crucial decisions. The ravines around our area are deep, they're dangerous, and the kids know that. We told my dad that we were going sliding, but we didn't tell him that they were going sliding down the ravine. This young woman arrives home. The hallway's not lit. It's very dark. The house, she thinks, is empty. Oh, my God. Can you watch them for a second? I didn't know what was going on, but I panicked right away because I said, my God, my kids are outside. It's impossible to predict when an emergency will occur. But if one does, we all hope that the right people will be there to respond to those in need. We begin in Deerfield, New York on February 15, 1993, where a fierce winter storm had left an unusually thick blanket of fresh snow that was irresistible to 11-year-old Grant Rozier and his good friend Greg Zisk. The ravines around our area are deep, they're dangerous, and we do our best to try to make the kids know that but they're not allowed to go back and play in a ravine. It's just too dangerous. Uh, this this part over here is the best, I think. It'll be an yeah. awesome place to slide down. Greg's been my friend for about six years. My best friend for six years. We hang out a lot. We go to the mall. We go skating together. We get girls together and stuff. Um, just, just hang out. <laughs> Awesome! Look at that! We told my dad that we were going sliding, but we didn't tell him that we were going sliding down the ravine. We just slide down there and you go all over the place and it's wicked fun, go really fast. This will be the best one. Come on, buddy. Come on. Yeah, that was awesome. He's out. Oh, yeah, we both like the thrill. You know, it's like bungee jumping. <laughs> you know, you're just going free falling. Come on. Oh, look at that. It's wicked awesome over there. And we went over to this pot where a big drift was. Come on, let's go this way. Dude, look at this. Look at over there. We're starting to go to the edge. You can hear it sink down a little bit. Oh, great. Look at this part. This is awesome. Come on. Come on. It's going to be wicked cool. Get down this pipe. Come on. I just couldn't believe how much snow was there. I was just thinking to myself, there's no way he could be buried under there and still be alive. You might think your dog wants variety, but in fact, sudden changes in his diet can sometimes lead to stomach discomfort. So do what's best for your dog. Feed him a consistent diet of one nutritious dog food. Purina Dog Chow brand dog food every day. Uka -chaka, Uka -chaka, Introducing a new green Listerine. New fresh burst Listerine. And it not only tastes great, it works great. It kills the germs that cause bad breath. It fights plaque above the gum line. It even fights the gum infection gingivitis. Now, can your mint mouthwash do all that? We don't think so. 
Get the new taste, new feeling, new sensation of new fresh burst Listerine. Panasonic palm quarter tapes play in your VHS recorder. Not all camcorders can do that. If anyone tells you that's not important, they're giving you a snow job. Get the Panasonic palm quarter camcorder or take your chances. Panasonic, just slightly ahead of our time. During the holidays, you could really work up an appetite. Luckily, there's Wendy's Big Bacon Classic Combo, our delicious Big Bacon Classic, plus Biggie Fries and a 20-ounce drink. It's some meal. Here goes. I love the holidays. Sometimes a road to life can be a bumpy one. And along the way, you gotta take your knocks. That's why there's Corel. Its beauty enlivens even the simplest meal, while its durability ensures it'll be around for many meals to come, no matter where the road may lead you. Beautifully durable Corel, designed for living. Find out about down-to-earth medicine from outer space. Especially for sufferers of osteoporosis. Tomorrow on CBS This Morning. A Disney holiday treat for the whole family. The world's greatest skaters celebrate Disney music and magic in a dazzling two-hour ice spectacular. All-stars Nancy Kerrigan, Paul Wiley, Katarina Vitt, Scott Hamilton, and teen sensation Michelle Kwan. Start your evening with Disney's greatest hits on ice Friday. Danny DeVito, Willett Scott, and Vince Gill, tonight on Dave. When the snowdrift Grant Rozier and his best friend, 12-year-old Greg Ziss, were standing on, gave way. They fell down an 80-foot ravine and were buried by the avalanche of snow. he was buried beside me so I started digging around where I was. There was no trace of anything, no boots, no gloves, no nothing. It was weird because like, one minute you're just up on the top and you're having fun, the next minute it's re really scary. I couldn't imagine that he could, you know, be dead because we were, like, so young. I didn't think, you know, anything like this could happen to us. I wanted to dig him out, but once I couldn't find him, I thought I ought to get up there and at least do something to try to save his life, you know, try to get some help. I was thinking this is taking me a real long time to get to the house and it's you know, precious moments that are going away. Each, each you know, time I fall down and you have to get back up, that's one second that Greg's under the snow now with no air. Dad! 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 By the time Grant got home, 15 minutes had passed since the avalanche. Where? Where? Where is he? He was in hysterics. I knew there was something drastically wrong. Ken had someone call for help, but the volunteer rescuers were several miles away. You go along the top of the ridge, I'll go down over here. I was cognizant that time was not on my side. Greg! Grant's aunt, Renee Spatuzzi, was also helping to search for Greg. I just couldn't believe how much snow was there. I was just thinking to myself, there's no way he could be buried under there and still be alive. Greg! Oh my God. Ken! Greg, look! Over there! Greg! Greg! Greg, hang on, buddy! I started digging, thinking that we might be able to find Greg right there. Greg, can you hear me? Twenty minutes had already passed since the avalanche. Greg, hang on, bud. I really don't remember 
thinking about a lot other than to get down through the snow as fast as possible. And if he's not there, move on to another spot. And if he's not there, move on to another one. If he's not there, move on to another one. Nothing was going to stop me until I found him. Oh, my God. Start right there. Start right there. Greg! Greg! You're here, Greg! We weren't getting anywhere. And I was terrified. Anything yet? I don't see anything. I didn't want to think that I'd never see him again. I wish I had gloves, and I didn't. Well, come and get you, honey. My hands were very cold, but Greg. once they got numb, it made it much easier just to continue digging. Hang on, Greg. You see him? Greg! Uh, you gotta be someone. Uh, oh, oh. Greg! Oh, wait, there's something here. Hang on. Uh, Greg! Uh, uh, when we found him, I thought that Greg was, was gone. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I just couldn't imagine telling his parents what happened. I was digging up one of my son's best friends. There was no sign of life or respiration or, or anything. Greg, can you hear me? But the scariest uh, moment was the very first minute I saw those eyes, about half open and glazed. I think that'll stick with you forever. It had been more than 40 minutes since Greg was buried under the snow. Greg appeared to be dead, but we were not going to just give up and, and let that be the case. No matter how I found him, I was going to do something to, uh, to try to change that. No matter. I'll start giving him some... Neither Renee or I um, are trained in CPR. Come on, Greg. Come on, breathe, Come on, buddy. We just drew upon what we thought we knew, understanding that the premise was to get air into this child's lungs. And... Uh, and that was what we tried to do. Ah. You hook up. Deerfield volunteer firefighter Paul Meekham helped coordinate the rescue attempt. It was a very dangerous situation in the fact that it was very steep and it seemed to be in the area of 60 to 70 feet um, down, straight down. Oh, God. Come on, pal. All of a sudden, his eyelid twitched and the first thing I thought was, God, could it be possible that we might be able to save this kid? Come on, Greg. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on. Come on. What's going on? Advanced EMT Steve Berry treated Greg at the scene. It's been a long time. What's his name? Greg. Greg. He was blue. He was breathing very slowly and very shallow, but it wasn't enough to maintain life. We hooked. You're all set, Paul. We're a volunteer fire department and uh, we don't do repelling situations as a norm, but that was the only way out. Hey, hold still, Greg. Hey, don't fight us. I was amazed that he was breathing on his own, but I was concerned that even if we did everything right, that he might still suffer brain damage. All right, here we come, guys. Okay, coming up. Take your time, guys. Come on. Nice and easy, nice and easy. When they dragged him out, now I'm starting to assess what does being alive mean now for this child? Does it mean uh, brain damage? It doesn't mean uh, not being exactly the same person he was before. Just as Greg was loaded into the ambulance, his mother, Mary Angela Zisk, arrived. They were telling me we have to see if we can revive him. He looked like a dead person. He didn't even look like he was going to be alive. But I couldn't even go near him. I couldn't hug him. They wouldn't let me touch him or anything. Greg was transported to St. Elizabeth Hospital, where he was met by an emergency team, including trauma nurse Patsy Matos. Greg, you're at the hospital. Okay. This child was in a serious situation. He was hypothermic, 88 degrees. He's been unconscious, unconscious. semi-conscious ever okay. since. In the initial period, the cold did work to Greg's advantage because it could have prevented irreversible brain damage. But when your body temperature drops, that changes a lot of things within the body that could be very serious and ultimately fatal. Okay. Airway's okay. Mike, it's check his chest. Can't, can't, can't. It's very important to warm him very slowly. Let's get the bear hugger ready. We placed a warming blanket on him called a bear hugger. It's hooked to a machine by a hose. You turn the machine on, and what it does is it blows warm air into the blanket itself, and it warms his body from the outside. How you doing? Saturation's up to 90%. Doing good. Do you remember where you are? 
as a person is warming up, when the temperature reaches between 91 and 93 degrees, you have to watch for symptoms of an impending cardiac arrest. You're gonna feel warm in just a few minutes. It was very, very tough to see him like that, very tough. He was very brave, but he was very scared. A CAT scan revealed Greg had suffered no brain injury. He was taken to the pediatric unit, where his family and friends were finally able to see him. His blue eyes were big and wide, and you know, and he knew who I was, and he hugged and kissed me. It was a, it was a great moment. It was a great moment. Did your head hurt at all? Then I just stayed up praying, thanking God that he let me live. We love you, honey. When I was buried down in the snow, I was struggling for a few minutes, and then I just gave up because I knew there was no hope for me. We almost lost Joe. To me, I thought I would never see anybody again. I was happy that he was OK. I was really happy. He looked a little blue because he was still cold. But he looked like, you know, okay for a person who got an avalanche. In the hospital, the food was bad, but we had pretty nurses, so I liked it pretty, it was pretty cool. But when I was ready to get out, I really wanted some salad food and I wanted pizza. Greg has completely recovered from the incident. <laughs> I believe it was a miracle. Anybody who could be under the snow that long, look the way he looked and go through what he went through and then come out of it unscathed. God, we were lucky, very lucky, all of us. I'm very grateful to Ken and Renee that they could find Greg and helped him and acted as quickly as they did. And I'm really thankful and I'm really proud of Grant. I just did what I thought was right. I calmed myself down and I went up the ravine to go get help. When I found out what Grant did for me, I think he really saved my life, and I love him as a brother. Me and Grant got a lot closer since that accident. We'll always be good friends. I'm just lucky to be around you. I cherish every moment I'm around with him. There is a lesson we learned. Don't take risks with your life, because it can happen in an instant. Your life can be taken away. They kept mentioning breaking up the floor. That wasn't gonna work. There's no way you're gonna punch through six inches of concrete with a live cat underneath you. That's when I thought that the cat wasn't gonna make it out. Boy, he's really stuck in there. Person has to deliver many, many gifts. Doesn't wanna worry, doesn't wanna break the bank. Goes to post office, finds out priority mail is a very smart solution, doesn't cost much. Gets priority handling, even gets delivered Saturday at no extra charge. Person is impressed. Postal people are helpful. Gifts get delivered. Kids are overjoyed. Person goes home, gets to spend some quality time with the missus. Still going. Long-lasting Energizer batteries keep going. Kids are full of questions. Am I no squirrel if I tell a lie? Can I have three wishes like Aladdin? Can I fly like Peter Pan? Can I, can I, can I? Who inspired these Disney questions? Burger King. Because for the first time ever, I get great Disney glasses from Coca-Cola. With magical moments from Disney classics. Aladdin. Peter Pan. All their favorites, just 89 cents each with any Whopper value meal. Daddy, are you mommy's Prince Charming? Burger King. Get your burgers worth the holiday start at 6 a.m. at Walmart. Festive tins filled with three flavors of popcorn are only $4 each, and a six-foot Christmas tree is only $13.96. Incredible savings Friday only, five hours only at Walmart. This Emerson VCR and 13-inch color TV, both with remote, are only $1.39 each. Friday morning from 6 to 11, the holiday start with savings. The holiday start at Walmart. Hey, Remington, shave this. 
Remington's created the Triple Foil, the only shaver with three narrow microscreens. For hard-to-shave places on hard-to-shave faces, the Remington Triple Foil. If you can grow it, we can shave it. This Thanksgiving, it's a celebration for the family when Christy reunites with her family. Daddy! Daddy! Until tragedy strikes. Your father has suffered a stroke. I'm not letting you go. Will she sacrifice her dreams? Her work here has only begun. For her family? Please don't be angry at me for leaving. A Christie special movie, Thanksgiving night. As the holidays approach, let's remember our brothers and sisters who are living with AIDS. Now more than ever, they need our love and support. Happy holidays. If you have cats, you've probably come to accept their eccentricities, just as Judith Keene of Bowie, Maryland, had accepted her cat, Honey Bunny's particular and peculiar habit, until one weekend in April of 1994, when it proved to be more than she could handle. I have five animals, two dogs, three cats, and since I have owned these cats, I have become one of those nutty cat women who have cat jewelry and shirts, and um, I, I even have a shirt that says, my cat is the cutest cat in the world. <laughs> I got Honey Bunny because somebody threw this cat out of the car. He's a very sweet cat, but when he plays, he's a real wrestler. And he does get into trouble. <laughs> Ever since I've had him, he would go down in events. He just likes to tunnel through the house, and he, it's, it's a big adventure for him, I guess. He had always done it, so it never occurred to me that he could hurt himself. I'm telling you, you need to get out of there now. My daughter says he's overweight. He eats only light cat food since he's been a year old, and he's still overweight. Honey bunny, don't be coming in here. I said, honey bunny, I am going to church, and I'm going out to dinner, and when I get back, you darn well better be out of there. You know, you can get into trouble in here. This is small. Judith returned home about three hours later. Hi, guys. Hi. Did you get Honey out of there? The first thing I did was go in to see if he was still in there. Oh. Oh, God. At this point, his whole head advanced oh into the vent. Oh, my God. You need to get out of there. I tried to push him back and was unsuccessful. His shoulder seemed very tight, so I figured that he was stuck in the vent. Honey bunny. Oh, honey bunny. I had no idea how to get this cat out of there, and that frightened me. Around 9.45 p.m., Prince George's County Animal Control sent Officer Julius Campbell to check on the problem. He was not making any noises to lead me to think that he was in any discomfort at all and a little area that I could see him through was just too small for this huge cat to be pulled up through. Oh, uh, right now, with animal control, we're not allowed to tear up anything in your house. Is, um, close that vent in that room there. What I advised her was to give the cat a chance to come out on his own. All right, honey bunny, listen. I did exactly what the animal control person told me. I put the vent cover on and I put a vacuum cleaner over it so that the cat wouldn't keep trying to come out of the hole that he couldn't come out of because he's physically twice the size of it. Okay, come on, honey bunny, come on. You gotta come back this way. Here's I put the can of cat food in there. A 16-pound cat does like to eat. This is not for you. And I had my animals um, come to bed with me. I was up pretty much the whole night. And I came down around 2 o'clock. Oh, and the cat had pushed the vacuum cleaner off, and he was fully into the vent. Now he was really stuck. He couldn't move. 
by around five o'clock, the cat was no longer just meowing, it was yowling. What's going on in here, God? I felt that I couldn't wake people up at five o'clock in the morning. I made it till six. The minute she called, I knew if she's calling me at six o'clock in the morning, it couldn't be good. Two of the first people Judith woke up that morning were her daughter Susan and her daughter's husband JB, both of whom are veterinarians. And she said, somebody's got to do something, and you need to be over here, A, because I'm a veterinarian, B, because it's her daughter, and she just needed the moral support. He's never gone in there before. All I could see was his head through this narrow vent opening. Luckily, I could see his pink nose, which I knew meant that he was breathing okay and his color was good. But I knew right away that there was no easy way to just pull this cat out of the opening because he was solidly wedged in there. It was early in the morning and I didn't have my wits about me, so I envisioned somehow getting some heavy machinery to open up the floor to get the cat out. Judith also got her friend and next door neighbor, Fire Chief Jim Crouch, out of bed. Judy, it's me. Boy, he is really stuck in there. Only your mother, you know? They kept mentioning breaking up the floor. Any worse than last night. That wasn't going to work. There's no way you're going to punch through six inches of concrete with a live cat underneath you without doing injury to the cat. Gee, he don't look so good. When you pushed on his head to push him backwards, his bottom would get bigger. It was like pushing on a cork in a wine bottle. He wasn't going to come out. I think I got an idea how we can get him out. So I figured if the cat wasn't going to do it on his own, we'd have to back him up for him. Do me a favor, fill, kind of clean this out and, and fill it up with real soapy water. Chief Crouch came up with the idea of snaking a rope through and then using a bug sprayer to flood the vent with soapy water. I also got a bigger light. So that he'd be a little slimmer and a little easier to, to basically move around or slide around in there. Am I getting him? When I called the station to see if I could get somebody to give me a hand, two of the volunteers offered to come down with the fire truck. What do you got, Jim? You guys ain't gonna believe this. Once they were totally ready and had everything set up, then I went ahead and anesthetized him. Just kind of moving a little bit. Okay. Go ahead, honey bunny. It's all right. Hang in there. He was not happy about getting the injection, but a small needle in his shoulder was nothing compared to being wedged in this tight space and not having food and water for the past 10 hours, which for him is a big ordeal. My mom's cats don't miss any meals. Can we, if I pull up the legs? In order to get to the hind legs of the cat, we had to actually push him up into the hole farther. And that didn't make him too happy. Uh, Pat, yeah. Go ahead and start to pull. Real slow. Real easy. All right, he's not coming. When we couldn't move him with the soapy water, right. that's when I thought that the cat wasn't going to make it out. Hang on a minute. Immediately, Jim Crouch said stop and put his hand back in there and was feeling around. And there was an area where the duct kind of jutted out a little bit more than the rest of it. I mean, he felt that Honey Bunny's shoulder was getting hung up right there. Judy? Yeah. Have yes. you got some, like, like, petroleum jelly or something? Yes. We went and got some petroleum jelly and lubed the cat all up with it. Any petroleum jelly. <laughs> this won't make him too happy, but it'll make him slide out. All right, guys, you ready? You ready to go, Jimmy? Go ahead and pull. All right. Maybe you can push. All right, yeah. He's... All right, you're almost there. Come on. Not too much longer. <sighs> Between the petroleum jelly and the soapy water, we were able to pull them back about 10 feet. But then he was starting to get a little stuck again. Hang on a minute. Your finger over that tail. Break his legs. Break his legs. I heard them mention that they may have to break the cat's legs. What you have to do is get him out. I can put him back together. With that, I was out the door like a shot. All right, we got feet. He's coming. We got feet. We see the cat. Pat, one of the firemen, he was able to scruff the cat and get his head up, but then he met some resistance. You want to pull him out? I've got him. All right, here, I'll, I'll swap, swap with you guys. It's okay, honey bunny. I get the oxygen. Almost JB there. walks over to the vent and he grabs a hold of honey bunny from the shoulder yeah. area and starts manipulating him. And next thing you know, he's out. Yeah, Jim, he's out. <laughs> yay, right. JB. And immediately we were all cheering and yay, thank goodness. Good job, JB. You got him out. There you go, honey bunny. There you go. There's a boy. Yeah, he's coming around. He hasn't moved a whole lot. He kicked a little bit, so you could tell he was doing okay. He was coming out of the anesthetic. 
And that was the biggest sigh of relief I think I've had in a long time. Thanks for your help. He looked like a drowned rat and smell, oh, the smell was unbelievable. I thought I would have been angry at him for doing this, but I was just totally relieved. I was so glad to have the cat out. Yeah, what is he looking at? I think he's avoiding Insects, avoidance. birds, yeah, avoidance. <laughs> avoidance, he's just looking the other way. I just cannot imagine a fellow as that cat. I have a saying that I use with my children at school that they're crying in their Kool-Aid. I'd be crying in my Kool-Aid from now on. It's okay, honey. I couldn't have had a different ending. I would have let them bulldoze the house before I would have let it had a, a different ending. Thank goodness you were home, fine. <laughs> my mom's love of animals while I was growing up is part of the reason why I ended up being a veterinarian. My mom says now if she had it to do it over again, she would have one child and a lot more animals instead of one animal and three children, but I don't think she really means it. Peach is scruffing your shame. Peach, want a treat? We don't normally respond on trapped animals like this, but sometimes there's a benefit of living next to the fire chief, and this was one of them. My enabler. <laughs> yeah, well, who, where'd I get them all? These people are wonderful. They're all volunteers. They come like Galahad, like well, there are knights in shining armor. They just drive fire trucks today. <laughs> Next. Can you watch them for a second? I didn't know what was going on, but I panicked right away because I said, my God, my kids are outside. Night, Murphy. Presents in the morning. It's time for the McDonald's Holiday Film Fest featuring The Land Before Time. Come on, follow me! Fievel Goes West. <laughs> Field of Dreams and Back to the Future, each just $5.99 with the purchase of any large sandwich or extra value meal. And each video includes a mail-in rebate offer for Jurassic Park. The McDonald's Holiday Film Fest, for all family favorites for the favorites in your family. McDonald's today. You might be confused by all the different types of pain relievers and all their claims, but your doctor isn't. They call one type NSAIDs, like aspirin, ibuprofen, and the latest pain reliever called Aleve with naproxen sodium. The pain reliever in Tylenol is different from all these, especially when it comes to your stomach. To varying degrees, every NSAID brand can sometimes cause the side effect of stomach irritation. Tylenol won't. The choice is clear. Tylenol, the pain reliever hospitals use most. Rescue 911 will continue. Everything we know we learn from The Wizard of Oz. Things like being on time. People come and go so quickly. Loyal friends. We've got to find Dorothy. Sensible shoes. Those slippers will never come off. And a loving family. This could never be like Kansas. The best Dorothy. lesson of all returns to CBS Wednesday Thanksgiving Eve. Frank Sinatra's duet sold over five million and earned him a Grammy. Now, entertainment's biggest stars join him for the musical event of the year. Sinatra Duets, Friday. This is CBS. It is an experience above all else. It is Avalon. Toyota technology taken to a new level of excellence. A world of superior comfort, room, and refined driving performance. Avalon, the new flagship from Toyota. Built exclusively in America. Experience the tranquility. Where does Santa do all his holiday shopping? Why at Target, of course. Where right now you can get Britannia watches. And these Buttonfly Britannia jeans for men for only $14.77, the lowest price of the season. A time for magic. You will hear the South Carolina Killer Mom's actual confession at 11. On August 8th, 1994, in Hammond, Indiana, Debbie Crozier was spending the afternoon with her fiancé's father, Wayne Edmonds, and her two young children. But as they discovered, it's risky to take for granted that the people who are in our lives today will be there tomorrow. If you can, I will, but, you know... Well, I, you know, I hope, you? because I, I just hate waiting, and then I don't know if he's going to get the kids to bed or not. All right. 
Guys, and Heather and Matthew, you know, said they were thirsty and stuff. So I went in there and got him each a pop and bought, you know, I bought him some candy. We got pops with a circle foot and dip it in pops. Then lick it and it pops all over your mouth. Then I had the push-ups. Then I had a sucker. Thanks. A note on the window said hey, they were hiring. Can you watch them for a second? Matthew, he's my fishing buddy. And Heather, she gets to be honoring one once in a while. But she's, she's a good kid. No, I already paid for once. These kids mean a lot to us. Cindy Barnes was driving a friend to the store. Scotty had said to me, look out, there's two kids playing there, you know, stay a little bit farther back. See, that's good. That, that's why you can't play that close. She's eating those orange sherbet push-ups, and uh, she had it all over her face, and uh, I thought she was really cute. David Bell happened to be on his way to run an errand at the same mini mall. This truck was in front of me and was moving along, stopping, going, stopping. I remember saying to myself, you're not driving an 18 volt Come on, just so easy, simple, you know, left turn, forward park, and stop, and, you know. She turned and clear from me. I just zoomed right past her. I was watching the truck, and then all of a sudden she just lunged forward. I knew that the little girl was said I, I didn't want to look. I really didn't want to look. I didn't know what was going on. But I panicked right away because I said, my God, my kids are outside. My baby! Oh my God! I couldn't believe it. The truck was on top of her and she couldn't move. And I screamed, I said, oh my God. I, I got angry, I got mad, upset because I said, how could this happen? What the hell you do? What's going on? My fiance's father wouldn't let me look at Heather. The way I saw that truck go over her, I didn't think there was going to be too much left of her. And I'm fighting him, letting me go, you know. I said, please, I want to see her, I want to see her. 911 emergency. I need an ambulance and a, um, something to Grand Food Mart, 650 Calumet Avenue. What's the problem? Uh, a truck ran through the window and there's a little kid under the truck. There's a little kid under the truck? Right. Is the truck on top of the child? The truck is through the window and there's a child underneath the truck, that's all I know. Is it I'm screaming for Jack, and I saw the little girl turning purple. I was I wanted to cry. I wanted to. I just, oh man, um, it gets me every single time. Like now. Call for ambulance three, engine four. Hammond dispatcher Jackie Wheeler sent rescue units to the scene as she continued to talk to store manager Karen Guzman. How old is the child? I don't know. It's like, I can't believe this is happening in front of my face. You just got scared way down inside. I could hear in the background the mother screaming. And that's one of the mo most terrible things you can hear is a parent, a mother, father screaming for their child. Mechanic Adron Mallard heard the crash from across the street. When I looked down at the child, the child was blue in color. And I told this man, we don't have time for a jack. We've got to get this truck off this child now. And he said, what do we do? And I said, let's pick it up. Let's lift the truck. I looked at him dead in the eyes. I said, let's do it. OK, let's do it. Get that team out the way. I took that anger, the emotions that, that was all going within me. And I just took it out on that truck. <laughs> Store clerk Pat Stepp heard their screams for help. Nobody wanted to go under the truck. Everybody, I think, was in shock. Thought Heather had died. And I couldn't see that truck going back down on top of her again. Get the baby out! Come on! Can't hold it up too much! Hurry up! And 
then I seen her move. I couldn't believe it. She was alive. Get the baby! Come on, somebody, please! This man told me at one point, I'm losing my grip. I'm losing my grip. Get the baby out! And I said, we cannot let it back down. We embraced each other. We was like, oh, man, thank God. It was a good job, you know. When I was carrying her out, she sat up and hugged me. Best hug I ever had in my life. Definitely. I'm holding Heather in my arms, just like you would a little baby. That's really hard for me. Her face was all swollen. She had pieces of glass all over her. She was real dirty. I said, I'm trained in first aid. Please put her down on the ground. I said, if she's got a spine or neck injury, you could do more damage by cradling her. Heather, you're be all right. I've never seen anything like it before in my life, and I hope to never see it again. Seven-year-old Heather Johnson and her five-year-old brother Matthew were taken to St. Margaret Mercy Health Care Centers. Heather! Okay, Heather, hold okay. still. We're going to okay. bring your brother yes, in here. Okay. Are you cold? Give us a I wanted to see my sister, because I want to see if she was okay. Let's roll sure. him and roll her. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Her eyes were purple. Yeah. And her whole face was purple. Yeah. All right, let's get him down the x-ray now, okay? Yeah. All right. He's looking like she's hurt. I was scared. I don't know if she was scared. While Matthew suffered a fractured collarbone in the accident, Amazingly, Heather only suffered three fractured ribs and a broken ankle. I hoped I wouldn't die if the truck was on like about five minutes, I would have passed away. It's hurt. It's choking me a little bit. In the six weeks that have passed, both children have completely recovered from the accident. Thanks. Thank you. I did fear for her life. Isn't that better? There's no way that I think that uh, this gentleman and myself could ever have done something like this if it wasn't for this little girl's life being fear. I don't know that it could be done again if it were the same situation. I want to thank him and give him a hug. Thank you very much. And just tell him I thank him very much for saving my child's life. Yeah, me too. <laughs> the family and David Bell have become close. David just happened to be in the right place at the right time. God gave him the strength to lift up that truck and get my daughter out. Because if it wasn't for him, it's the honest truth, I would have lost her. It was a garden and angel. It was like he was meant to be there for some reason. <laughs> Heather, who I call my girl, said about the driver of the pickup truck. I know she didn't mean to hit me, you know, on purpose. And it really touched me. I said, she, you know, this girl can grow up to be someone. It's like God gave her a second chance. Hey, you gotta get yeah. Yeah. David Bell, I was the hero. We're like very close friends, you know. But he's part of my family now. Hey, let's all jump out there. I love David Bell with all my heart, and he will always be welcoming my family. <laughs> Next. This young woman arrives home. The hallway's not lit, it's very dark. The house she thinks is empty. Oh my God.
The Duplo System from Lego. Building toys for building skills. Surprise someone you love with a wonderful gift from Target. Like the Black & Decker Optima Space Maker Drip Coffee Maker, Horizontal Toaster and the Hideaway Can Opener. All wonderful under the cabinet gifts on sale this week at Target. Time for magic. It's your sister's recital. An intermission would be music to your ears. Chewy caramel twice, milk chocolate twice, and that great cookie crunch twice. You get one great snack after another. And now for our next selection. It's coming. The misery of a cold. And now the power to fight it. All the power of Elka Seltzer Plus Cold Medicine is taking shape. In new Elka Seltzer Plus liquid gels. Rushing concentrated medicines to soothe your aches, relieve your runny nose, free your breathing. Rush relief with new Elka Seltzer Plus liquid gels. The government took them from their home in the name of profit. My kids are put in a cage so strangers can stare at them. The parents fought their guardian in a bitter custody battle. I make the decisions here. While the Dion Kreis were held hostage with no way out. My girls are being abused. Bo Bridges and the dramatic conclusion. Million Dollar Babies, next. Jim Rockford is back on the case in L.A., and everything's the same, except an ex-wife. Do we have to argue about everything? The Rockford Files, Sunday. Twenty-seven-year-old Robin Gregg lived with her parents in the quiet community of Lafayette, California. But on July the 11th, 1994, after spending the night at a friend's, Robin returned home to discover that all was not as she had left it. It's a low-crime neighborhood, but we do have a lot of property crimes, uh, thefts and burglaries, that type of thing. But there are rapes in, in Lafayette. And this young woman uh, arrives home. Both parents are away at work. The hallway's not lit, it's very dark. The house, she thinks, is empty. Contra Costa County Sheriff's Dispatcher Christy Francis took the call. Your heart skips a couple of beats and your stomach might flip flop a little bit when you know you have what we call a hot call. Something that's in progress that has potential for danger. 18X41. When Lafayette police officer Eric Navarro and his partner were dispatched to the house, they were four miles away. When we receive a call like this with an intruder or a suspect, we never know what to expect. It puts us in danger because it's the unknown. Just a minute, let me get the owner. Okay, appreciate it, thanks. We leave our, our little door open for the kitties and I walked into the hallway and there was somebody standing there. Okay, I need to cal calm down, okay? I want to get a description of him. Is he white, black, Hispanic? White, white, it was kind of, the hallway was dark. Okay. Was walking to go. Can you tell about how he was kept? Okay, calm down, okay? Let me ask some questions, all right? Can you tell about how tall he was? <laughs> He was uh, about five foot seven. Okay, and, 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 a, and a hat, like okay. a straw hat kind of thing. It was it was down by my room. <laughs> like, and the thing okay, is, Robin, Robin, stop. Okay, let me ask you some questions. Okay. The call was difficult because she was so upset. 
but it was hard to get information from her. Did he leave in a car? <laughs> no, there's nothing. There was no car in front of our house or anything, but he just froze. <laughs> oh, my God, it was a person. It was a person. It okay, can you what else is wearing, Robin? Shorts and a T-shirt. I think it was so dark, and I was, um, I know there's a hat on him. It, you know, a guy about, tw uh, could be 25 years old. And they're, 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 they're was, he still on the, was he still in the house when you left? Yeah. I know, it's all body right there. Okay, Robin, calm down, okay? Whenever you send an officer into a potentially dangerous situation, you try to get as much information as possible. It's real frustrating at times when you're trying to take a call and you feel that there's more information that you should get, but you're not able to get it. Our, our person tapped me, he was right there. And he looked at me, the cat looked at me kind of weird too, you know? You know, like, like looked at me like something's going on. Our cat's real smart, you know? <laughs> I love my cats. I feared that this man was going to harm them. Who knows, he could be a cat murderer. Uh, my cat, do you think my cat's okay? I'm sure your cat's probably fine. Okay, okay, okay Robin, the officers are there at the house with you now? Can I go talk yeah, to them? Yeah, go ahead and go talk to them, okay? You did really good, all right? Okay. All right you're welcome. Bye-bye. Knowing that there's someone inside the house that's not going to be happy to see the officer, there's always a possibility that officer could be killed in this type of situation. I don't know where the intruder's at. I don't know if he's desperate enough to use violence on a police officer. The suspect has the advantage. They can hear me coming into a room, an entryway. It seems like you're almost in a vacuum, even though your body and your mind's going 100 miles an hour. It almost seems like time has been slowed down. Lafayette Police, don't move. Do not move. I don't want to shoot a person that's unarmed. Don't move. But then again, I also don't want to be hurt. In that one instant, I'm thinking, shoot or don't shoot. Here I was, a standoff with a dummy, and I had to laugh to myself. I'm going, I almost shot this thing. Yeah, 41, it was a mannequin uh, at the end of the hallway. It's uh, unfounded at this time. My partner was on the radio with the officer. When she told me there was a mannequin, we were just both hysterical, with tears running down our faces. We were laughing so hard. In all the years I've been doing this, you think that you've heard everything. <laughs> And this was definitely a first. I told the woman, I'm going to turn on a light. I want you to tell me if this is what you saw. Immediately, the woman uh, gasped for air. Um, I think she started grabbing her chest and exclaiming, oh my god, oh my god, that's it. That's what I saw. Mannequin. You know, I mean, I could not believe this. That's exactly what I saw. I was so humiliated. And it was a bald, armless mannequin. But, you know, part of me wanted to hug her and thank her that she wasn't a burglar. She wasn't out to hurt me and my family and my cats. <laughs> that should be great. Robin's mother, Leslie Collier, had bought the mannequin at a garage sale. I found out about all this when I called home and a policeman answered my phone. He says, there's been a problem here. The lady, your mannequin almost got shot. I was really embarrassed. I put my head down on the desk at work after I got off the phone. I said, oh, no, no, no. Leslie's husband, Gary, had no idea their joke would get so out of hand. When I heard the police had come, I couldn't believe it. Not in my wildest dreams could I have imagined that. I was so upset for scaring her so bad that I didn't want to see that mannequin around anymore. And so I took it to a flea market and sold it real fast for $15. So she's gone. We made a $5 profit on the mannequin. Here we go! Backwards, backwards. I am very grateful to the Lafayette police. 
They were here in a matter of minutes. And to me, that shows, you know, that they really care. I didn't feel it was foolish for her to call 911. She felt danger at that point. Our main concern is, is her safety. If someone notices their house has been disturbed or broken into, call the police, don't even go into the residence to, to check it, because you have no idea if there's someone still inside or not. There's so much potential of injury, danger, or death that it's best not to even confront it at all just to get out of the house. When I look back, I laugh at it now. But the main thing is I'm safe, I'm alive, so that makes me feel wonderful. suffering from sinus pain, you can't take a medicine that can make you drowsy. Sudafed Sinus has a maximum strength pain reliever and the non-drowsy decongestant in Sudafed to relieve sinus headache and congestion so you stay alert. Sudafed Sinus. I'm breaking it off. You're dull, lifeless. You're history. Now there's moisture recovery from Lubriderm with alpha hydroxy. It exfoliates then moisturizes. Out! Out! New moisture recovery from Lubriderm for the skin you'd rather be in. How much closer do our precision heads help shave beneath the skin? How much closer does our innovative groove make Norelco's lift and cut system? How much better is the latest Norelco razor? We think you'll find it's never brought you closer. The Norelco razor, our closest shave ever. Everybody hold on to your seat. More colossal than a roller coaster. A bigger rush than free falling. The thrill ride of your life isn't at any amusement park. Do they think I'm doing this for fun? But it's yours to give. Speed on video cassette. Buy the ultimate gift. Give it for $19.98 or less. <laughs> Get a $5 rebate on Casio's tough G-Shock Illuminator watch with purchase of speed. She's the most watched woman in the world. Thank you. That's enough. But you've never seen her like this. Exclusive footage. Charles had categorically stated to her that he didn't love her. And secrets from a palace insider. A special edition of Eye to Eye with Connie Chung. Thursday. Nine one one emergency. If your community does not have 911, keep the emergency numbers posted near the phone and teach your children when and how to use them. This series is dedicated to all the men, women, and children who make a difference. I'm William Shatner. Join us again next week for more true stories on Rescue 911. Tonight, the conclusion of the real-life fairy tale turned nightmare. The beyond quintuplets imprisoned in a spotlight of cold-hearted greed and their family's heartrending struggle to win them back. Bow Bridges in the shocking true million-dollar babies next.